Hey there gang, time to unbox some more comics. We're actually working on the box that we started yesterday. And if you saw that video, you will uh, maybe have an idea of what it is we're going to look at today. Uh, if not, then you're kind of flying blind, but that's okay. Any comic book is a good comic book. And if you like comics, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bubby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. And yeah, as I mentioned in the uh, teaser, based on yesterday's video, I think I have an idea of what we're going to see. We're still working on the same box, but we only did about half the box yesterday. We're doing the other half today. And I think the last few books on uh, that last video give us kind of a preview, I think, of what we're going to see. But you never know. There's always a surprise. That's why we do this, because although I I, you know, I've got a job to do. I've got to grade these books so they can be sold on eBay. And the seller name, if you're interested, is .com Comics. But the point of the video is just that I've got no idea what's been put in the box for me to work on. And it's just fun, you know, hauling the comics out, taking a look, having a conversation uh, with you about what we see, and just, you know, having some fun together, kind of oogling some old comic books. So if you like comics, if you if you like this video, please do like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the groovy things, and let's uh, let's pick it up right where we left off last time. And as I suspected, I think most of the books the rest of the way down are going to be like this, Archie. I'm a lot more into Archie now uh, than I was when I was a kid. Of course, I was a kid in the, um, you know, from about the mid-70s on. I was, you know, uh, maybe about 75, 76 I maybe started reading a little bit earlier, but I think when I first started, you know, buying them with my own allowance money, it was late 75, early 76, somewhere in there. So I would have been about eight, nine, ten years old. Um, and even by then, I was I was way outgrown for Archie. To me, Archie was girl books. Harvey was baby books. Charlton was poor man books. <laughs> And uh, and Gold Key was just yeah, not that exciting. Although there weren't a lot of adventure titles, as I recall, from um, Gold Key when I was a kid. It was mostly the the um, the Bugs Bunny and you know, things like that. So I was I was into the superheroes um, to the extent that even things like you know Jonah Hex, uh, Sergeant Rock, things like that, I would only like really buy reluctantly if you know there weren't enough new books out that week and I ended up with more allowance money than comic books. And my, my weekly allowance was only $2 a week, but when the comic books were 25, 30, 35 cents, you could, you could get a, you know, a little stack anyway. Um, once they went up to 40 cents, I had to, and definitely 50 cents, I had to argue for a raise in my allowance. Um, but anyway, I think we're going to be looking at some Archie books here and some of them are older ones. The 13th Archie Annual. And you can tell here the art style is a little different. <laughs> Look what somebody did. Well, I know who, who the somebody is. It's John. Uh, and John, I think it's Gonzalez. And John uh, signed a lot of the Western books we looked at last time. But it looks like John here had a little fun with Archie. With Betty, too, frankly. And all of them. All of them got the, uh, the dirty tooth treatment. But uh, this is, I'm going to say, the golden age of Archie art. Maybe even a little beforehand. This is a lot of Dan DiCarlo, I think. And the 70s were certainly quality Archie. From the 80s onward, they looked less on model. And, and these days, I don't know why, but anytime Archie does, you know, of course, they've, they've tried to go on with the... Uh, you know, in a more modern style with the Archie books. But anytime they try to do something in the classic style, it's like nobody can actually do it. And I guess it's it's fairly hard, you know. That's very deceptive. You think that would be a very simple thing to draw. But uh, nobody seems to get it quite right. Arch, modern Archie books, again, when they try and do the classic characters, just doesn't look right. And he, But even here, Archie doesn't look... That looks more like... Uh, Little Archie. This might be a... What's his name who did Little Archie? Bob Balling? This might be a Bob Balling cover, cover because that looks more like Little Archie than it does Archie Archie. 
I'm hoping we find uh, some of the double entendre covers in here. That would be cool. Like the, uh, well, it wouldn't be in here because the owner, the owner collects Archie uh, and, uh, or he, he likes Betty and Veronica stuff, but he would have kept that cover, either kept it for himself or uh, sent it off to CGC. And of course, I'm talking about the one where Archie said that uh, to get a date with Betty, he had to beat off three guys. <laughs> So that's a classic. <laughs> You'd better come along. Oh, no. Archie got arrested. Oh, no. What do you suppose he did? Did you ever turn over a new leaf only to find that someone had torn out the next page? Oh, is that turn over a new leaf? Refer I thought it referred to actual leaves. Does that actually refer to Leafs in a Notebook, or is Archie just... I, I don't know. I'm confused. Look at this. They're sucking face. Or they certainly were, at any rate. <laughs> Archie's missing all the fun. Yeah. <laughs> the cage is all the way up to empty. Yeah, I've, I've had that experience a lot of times. 1959. Crazy. Ooh, Pep Comics. Pep. Number 132. She She's looking very Will Eisner. That looks like a Will Eisner vamp more than it does a an Archie girl. <laughs> Get bored waiting. No, I think Archie's okay. <laughs> Archie's pals and gals. Number 17. And that's an early one. Now let's see what else we got here. Looks like we're going to have more Archie. And I, you know, frankly, I don't know a lot about Archie books. Um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't collect them at all when I was a kid. And of course, these predate when I would have collected them anyway. But um, the, I, I have purchased Archie's lately just because I like the, you know, the art in them, I think is just very, very classic. I mean, the stories are, you know, yeah, you read one, you read them all, pretty much. Every now and again, you'll get one that's clever. But um, I just, I just appreciate the art style now. So whenever I, whenever I get you know, a bunch of books that I buy at an auction or something, and it's got some Archies in it. I don't try and trade off or give away those Archies. I, I keep them. I do. So there you go. I, I, I sound like I'm making some grand confession. Like, I keep my Archies. I'm sorry. Like, I'm apologizing for something. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at this one. They're getting a little mod, aren't they? Freaking John. <laughs> Archie's Christmas Stocking, 1959. But anyway, I uh, I can't add a lot to the conversation here. There's probably, if you are an Archie aficionado, you probably know all kinds of little tidbits about these books that I'm completely just passing over. So if you know anything about Archie and you want to share, by all means, uh, you know, as I, I've said before, this, it, you know, this channel isn't just about me showing off how much I know about comics. It's a conversation. And uh, I invite you to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And especially if you can add something, tell us something we don't know about uh, these books. And in my case, anyway, you would be telling me almost anything. I'm trying to remember, PDC is, uh, that's the distributor. And I'm trying to, trying to remember who that is. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, Archie's got a boom box. That's crazy. It's a real to real boom box. Man, I can't remember the last time I actually saw a boom box. I remember as a teenager in the 80s, you had to have a boom box. You were not. You were not a real live American boy if you did not own a boombox with a cassette player. <laughs> do they even make cassettes anymore? Uh, it's like, you know, do they still make eight tracks? 
Uh, this one's got some kind of stamp on it. Freaking everybody's paired off except poor Juggy. Yeah, that's too bad. Archie's a good loser. Yeah, well, that's, you know, take it where you can get it. <laughs> yeah, they rested again. Man, they were little hellions, weren't they? 50 miles an hour, that's ridiculous. We haven't even been out an hour. <laughs> so now we have, what's next? Laugh Comics. Laugh Comics. Freaking John. And again, he can't decide if he's John or Johnny. Is Johnny here? This is Johnny K.O.B. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Does Father know best? Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, that's the geometry Betty knows. The love triangle. Watch your hat and coat and girlfriend. Uh-oh. They got new hairstyles. Neither one of them looks right. Doo -doo -doo. Laugh. Ooh, outer space hijinks. What is this, Batman? <laughs> Even Archie was getting in on the aliens game. Boom, boom, boom. I love how they walked in. Uh, that's very, um, who's the keep on trucking guy there? Uh, Zap Comics. What is his name? Oh, Sean, my coworker, will get mad at me because he's all into the um, the underground comics. Why can't I think? Oh, R. Crumb? Is that it? But I don't know if the keep on trucking guy is, is R. Crumb. But that's what they're walking like. Did Archie get there yet? Not quite, Daddy. Oh, see, now there's a, there's a nice double entendre cover for you. That was very risque. But that one wasn't accidental. They meant to, that one to be risque. My goodness. Look at, she's even got the, she's even flipping up her skirt up above her knees. You can see the slip here. She wants Archie to get there. Holy, wow. Little hussy. <laughs> And horses, horses' asses. Now published every month, Betty and Veronica. Hmm. Some more Betty and Veronica. John signing his name all over everything. John signing Betty's ass. <laughs> <laughs> and that's dangerous. That's not, that's, that's, you could get in trouble. You get kicked out of the pool for doing that. Lover boy hairdo. Oh my. Mrs. Archie Andrews. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. We're getting, we're getting towards the end of the box here. Let's see. It looks like it's going to be some more, more Archie. I mean, more Betty and Veronica. And more friggin' John. And again, the, the dates that you're seeing here are written on the bags. You can see that. But John is signing his name right on the book. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, I can't get this one. Separate the dinosaur? Hi Ron, what's new? Giggle. Well <laughs> what's that what is that song? Oh, you won't remember it if you're not old enough. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Wow, that was a flashback. I pulled that right out of my butt. Oh hey, we just saw that one. And she's still a hussy. Boom boom. 
Poor Juggy's red in the face. Ah, oh, there's two tall Jones. Veronica. Ha oh, oh. They're looking at her ass. That's exactly what they're doing. You can't do that anymore. You can't get away with that anymore. That's cis. They're being a bunch of cis males is what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So what do you think? Did uh, Archie Comics, did they reinforce gender stereotypes or were they merely a reflection of society? Well, Wilbur. You don't often see Wilbur. That's Wilbur. Um, you know, did the Archie comics merely reflect, um, you know, gender stereotypes, uh, the the ideal of the period, or or did they reinforce it? You know, uh, did and, and yeah, I had a uh, and this you know you talk about you know modern liberalism in college back in the early nineties. I had a friend who was a uh, she was taking some some class, some psychology class, media, no, media studies, it was. And the professor assigned them to write a paper showing how advertising pushes gender stereotypes. And I had a, I had a brother word processor. This is even before, you know, home computers were a thing. This is, you know, this is before Windows 95. Uh, and um, so I had a brother word processor. So she wanted to come over to my apartment to use that to write her paper. And she got a little mad at me because I, I was telling her, you know, advertisers... They can't afford to set, you know, societal trends that, that they're not in that business. They're not going to risk that money. They're only going to play to existing norms. And so, you know, if if there's an ad where a woman really wants a diamond ring and blah, 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 that's not that's not them pushing a gender normative stereotype. It's just them reinforcing what naturally exists in society. Um, so she didn't, she didn't really like that because the professor didn't like it. It wasn't, wasn't the, the it wasn't the paper the professor wanted. <laughs> so anyway, but what do you think? Jughead's fantasy. Wow. <laughs> it's a good thing they didn't do a book of Archie's fantasy. That could have got a little raunch, raunchy. Um, I don't think I've ever heard the title Jughead's fantasy before, but anyway, what do you think? Do you think the Archie books... Uh, reflected um, societal norms, or did it, you know, push uh, and enforce it? You know, did did people believe in the dif different uh, cis genders, so to speak, because they they read it in an Archie comic, or did the Archie comic just reflect what already existed? I don't know. I see. I'm trying to have a deep philosophical discussion, and I'm I'm <laughs> not doing a good job. <laughs> That's not a very good perspective. There, Archie looks. I mean, Juggy looks a little too tall. A little, a little too big. He's well. I guess he's. I know he's supposed to be in the foreground, but. And is this it? No, we got a few more. A few more. But this is the last stack here. In this uh, this box for this video and for this box, there you go. I was trying to think of the guy who, um, and you know, we recently sold one of those issues, the Immortal Hulk issue that had the uh, the backwards and it said jewelry instead of jewelry. Um, I was going to make a joke, but then I couldn't remember the artist's name, and I was like, well, I lost it. I lost the moment. Was that say death? Death guard. John, you're an asshole. <laughs> he wrote death guard on, on Reggie's chest. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. 1955. Pals and Gals number 10. Number 14. Number 13. And that's it. I don't. I don't know that I did a very good job with that uh, particular box. One, because I don't know a lot about Archie, and and two, because again, Sheila's asleep in the other room, and I'm I'm too concerned with making too much noise 
to form a cogent argument of the whole gender stereotyping thing I was trying to discuss, but whatever, you know, not every video is gonna knock them out of the park. Uh, until the next one, maybe the next one will be good. Maybe the next one will suck balls. I don't know. But until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.